Welcome to our training, Get a Payment Report. In general, Amazon settles seller accounts every two weeks. That means we take your beginning balance, add your sales, subtract expenses, adjust for any refunds, and then transfer payment to you after withholding an amount in reserve. That reserved amount becomes the beginning balance for your next settlement period. If you'd like to know how a payment for a past settlement period was calculated or know more about an upcoming payout, you can use a payment report in Seller Central. Let's review how to get a payment report, as well as how to interpret the balances, transactions, payouts, and other information you'll find there. To locate your payment reports, open the Seller Central main menu. Hover over Payments and click Payments. You'll be brought to the Statement View section of your Payments Dashboard, which provides summaries of your current or open settlement periods. You can also use it to view summaries for previous or closed settlement periods. At the top of this section, you'll see a current total balance and available funds for each of your accounts. You'll also see a recent payout for each account with payment history. A total balance is the current amount in an account. It reflects all sales, expenses, and refunds to date and includes the amount currently held in reserve. The funds available in an account are the portion of your total balance set aside for transfer to you. You can see current funds set aside by leaving the drop-down menu defaulted to Now. Or you can select at Settlement End to view funds projected for transfer to you at the end of your open settlement period. In general, if there's a difference, the funds available at settlement end will be higher. To the right of the funds available drop-down menu, you'll see recent payouts. A recent payout is the amount that was transferred to you at the end of your previous settlement period. This is also called a disbursement. All sellers with payment history will see a total balance, funds available, and recent payout for a standard orders account. This account is used for orders that customers paid for by shopping normally in the Amazon store. You may also see a total balance, funds available, and recent payout for an invoiced orders account. This account is used for orders made by qualified Amazon business customers who have opted to pay by receiving billing invoices from Amazon. Billing invoices allow customers to group and pay for multiple orders using set terms. These customers may only buy products in the Amazon store because they can use invoices to streamline. Below your standard and invoiced orders, you may also see a total balance for deferred transactions. Deferred transactions are for pending orders. An order can be pending for two reasons, a delivery policy or an unpaid invoice. Most orders in the Amazon store are deferred for some period of time because of a delivery-related deferral. Typically, that's seven days, which helps cover the possibility of a customer refund. An invoiced order is also considered deferred until a customer pays their invoice. Typically, that's 30 to 45 days after the date the order was placed. In the event that a customer doesn't pay an invoice, Amazon makes funds available to sellers on a scheduled release date. We total all your currently deferred transactions across accounts and put them in this separate row so you can quickly see the full amount you have pending. You can think of your deferred transactions balance as a placeholder. As order payments are released, the funds are removed from your deferred transactions balance and added to the total balances for your standard and invoiced orders. Funds aren't available for pending orders. That's why you'll see zero rand in the funds available column for deferred transactions. But when orders are added to the total balances for your standard order and invoiced order accounts, you'll see the same amounts added to your funds available too. To see how all your account balances and available funds add up for both released and deferred transactions, refer to the All Accounts row. The Statement View page also provides a graph that breaks down settlement periods for standard and invoiced order accounts. This graph only includes released transactions, not deferred ones. You can think of this graph as a snapshot of an account for a given time period, while the total balances and available funds above reflect the accumulation of all settlement periods. Use the drop-down menus to select the account type and settlement period you'd like to view. The amounts displayed for an open settlement period will change as new transactions are recorded. But if you view a past settlement period, the amounts displayed are final. 
Your net proceeds amount is the total after your beginning balance, sales, refunds, expenses, and account reserve are added together. If you're viewing an open settlement period, your net proceeds will match the funds available above for the relevant account when At Settlement End is selected. If you're viewing a past settlement period, your net proceeds will match the amount transferred to you. Your beginning balance is the amount carried over from the previous settlement period. As long as your last transfer was successful, this amount will equal the amount held in reserve for your previous settlement period. Your sales amount is what was added to your account during the settlement period as a result of customer orders. That includes product charges, your price multiplied by the quantity sold. It also includes amounts collected from customers to cover shipping, taxes, and regulatory fees, and other debits like FBA inventory reimbursements. Your refund amount combines two kinds of refunds for the settlement period. Refunded expenses are added to your account. They include reimbursements for Amazon fees and promo rebates. Refunded sales are subtracted from your account. They include reimbursements for customer orders. Your total refund amount will be positive or negative depending on which type of refund is larger. Your expenses amount is what was subtracted from your account during the settlement period in the form of Amazon charges. This includes referral and other selling fees, inventory and other FBA fees, advertising costs and other charges, like coupon redemption fees. Finally, your account level reserve is the amount held in your account to ensure you have funds to fulfill financial obligations carried across settlement periods. That includes A to Z guarantee claims and chargebacks for disputed purchases. It can also include amounts withheld for income tax according to local regulations or funds set aside because of lower performance metrics. Having an amount in reserve is a normal part of selling in the Amazon store. The Statement View section is the best way to get an overview of an account, but you can use other parts of your payments dashboard to get additional details. The Transaction View section lets you locate and view specific orders, refunds, expenses, and other Amazon-initiated charges and credits. You can use filters to locate a particular transaction. Make sure you have the right account type selected. Then you can filter by transaction type as well as status, either released or deferred. You can also filter by custom date range, past number of days, or settlement period. Click the Update button after selecting filters to refresh the list of transactions below. If you prefer, you can also search for a specific transaction using the 17-digit customer order number. After you've located a specific transaction, click its amount in the Total column if you'd like additional details. You can also click certain fee amounts in your transaction details to get a breakdown of how the fee was calculated. In the next section of your Payments Dashboard, All Statements, you can download a copy of a transaction level report. Make sure you have the right account type selected. Then you can filter by entering a custom date range and clicking the Search button. After locating the relevant report, click the button at the end of its row to download your file. The Disbursement section of your Payments Dashboard shows the amount paid out to you in each settlement period as well as the status of your payouts. We report payout status in four stages, scheduled payout, processing, sent to Amazon's bank provider, and acknowledged by Amazon's bank provider. Note that when your payout status is listed as done, it can then take up to five business days for funds to appear in your bank account. Remember, too, that you must have valid bank account and credit card information entered in your seller account settings in order to receive payments. Keeping your seller account in good standing also helps prevent potential payment delays. The final section of your payments dashboard, Date Range Reports, lets you generate and download individual transaction and summary reports using a custom date range. Make sure you have the right account type selected. Then click the Generate Report button and select your report type in the pop-up. Choose a month or enter a custom date range, then click the Generate button to build your report. Note that larger date range reports may take an hour or more to generate. This concludes our training on getting a payment report. Thank you and happy selling in the Amazon store!